Is America a Christian nation? How you answer that question will depend on who you ask. Let me explain. There are different ways to answer the question, is America a Christian nation? We can look into history and try to discern the relative levels of Christian piety amongst the Founding Fathers. We could talk about religious elements in the country's founding documents, or we could look at church attendance across time. Talking about church attendance is often linked to nostalgia, the sense that America used to be a Christian nation, but has now lost its way. Fewer people go to church, and the number of people who identify as Christian is down. Christian values seem to be disappearing from the public discourse. Therefore, many think America used to be a Christian nation, but it's in danger of losing that status. But ask black Christians, is America a Christian nation? And you get a very different response. Which period of our American Christian past was the golden age to which we shall now return? Would the enslaved black Christians who petitioned for freedom during the Revolutionary War on Christian grounds consider America a truly Christian nation? Would those suffering under Jim Crow in the 1950s think of the post-World War II boom in church attendance and family values as a period of freedom for all? For many black Christians, the issue of America's Christian identity cannot be separated from America's history of race-based slavery and segregation. It has been precisely the presence of these twin evils that has led African Americans to question American Christianity throughout our history. Philander O'Connor called the American South Christ haunted. She meant that the memory of Jesus in the Southern landscape troubles the consciences of those who do evil there. O'Connor gets at how the issue of America's Christian status has been posed in black Christian spaces. The question has not been, is America a Christian nation? But rather, how can a nation with so many professed Christians allow so much evil and injustice in its midst. For example, Frederick Douglass made this point in a particularly biting portion of his famous speech, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July. He wonders what the Christianity of this land means for people in chains. He said, the fact that the church in our country, with a few exceptions, does not esteem the fugitive slave law as a declaration of war against religious liberty implies that the church regards religion simply as a form of worship, an empty ceremony, and not a vital principle requiring active benevolence, justice, love, and goodwill towards man. It esteems sacrifice above mercy, psalm singing above right doing, solemn meetings above practical righteousness, a worship that can be conducted by persons who refuse to give shelter to the houseless, to give bread to the hungry, clothing to the naked, who enjoin obedience to a law forbidding these acts of mercy is a curse and not a blessing to mankind. The Bible addresses all such persons as scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites who pay tithe of mint, honest, and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Frederick Douglass's critique only has power because he knew that America claimed to be a nation where Christian values predominate. For Frederick, a Christian nation is not a status to be claimed, but a reality to strive for. In effect, he says, you want to say that the church holds sway in this country? You want to claim that this place is filled to the brim with Christians? Fine. Free the enslaved, and then I'll take you seriously. This same basic claim was made over a century later in Martin Luther King Jr.'s A Letter from a Birmingham Jail. He critiques white Christian moderates for opposing rather than supporting black claims for civil rights. For leaders like Douglas and King, the question, is America a Christian country? It's not primarily a historical question, but a moral one. How could a nation filled with so many Christians allow for injustice and oppression to exist in our midst? This might be a better path for us as a church today. Rather than trying to settle the question of whether America can be, is, or ever was a Christian country. We should try to be better Christians in this country today. In other words, we should see our Christian identity as aspirational. Are we witnesses to Christ and his kingdom through how we care for our most vulnerable neighbors? The frightened mother worried about how she's going to make it financially. The growing child in her womb. The homeless man on the street having a mental health episode. 
the criminal we decided isn't worth a second chance, the immigrant, the abused, the traumatized, and the trafficked. Frederick Douglass's question still rings true, and it only has power because for all our flaws, the teachings of Christ do indeed haunt this land. What does our supposed Christian faith in this country mean to the knocked around and stepped on peoples in our midst? The question, is America a Christian nation? is not a historical question, but again, a moral one. And it is not a question we will answer by looking to the past, but by the church living as the people of God in the present. To learn more, check out the resources in the notes and follow us at holypost.com.